I'd like to introduce you today to the third kit in the Gardens to Go series. This one is for about middle school and up, and a good chunk of it, of its 11 activities, have to do with water moving through plants, and then there's a few other fun activities. So we're going to demonstrate some of the things that, in terms of water movement through plants. So the first thing is we know plants get their water from the soil. And sometimes soil has a lot of water and sometimes it doesn't. So how does that make a difference to the plant? All right. Well, when water first gets into soil, if there's a lot of water, it saturates it. It saturates it to the point where there's water coming out and dripping because it has filled up all the water spaces and all the air spaces. Air spaces make up an important part of soil. So if you have all the air spaces filled, then there's no way for the plant roots to get the air they need and in saturated soil, the plant will die. If you let the water get to the point where it's not dripping so much, then there's still air in there. The plant can be happy. It's called field capacity. It's got enough water for the plants and it's still got air so the plant can survive just fine. If you get to the point where there's no water in the soil, I mean, there's still water in here, but you'd have to suck it out and plants just don't do that. So this is the wilting capacity. At this point, the wilting point of plants, they'll tell you that they need more water and so they'll start wilting. And if, they're, if they don't get water after that, then they die. So how does water get through a plant? Well, there's different kinds of roots, all right, because water goes in through the roots of a plant. There's fibrous roots, which anchor into the soil really well, like, if, like grasses. If you try to pull grass out of the ground, it's really resistant to coming because it's got all these fibrous roots. And then there's plants that have tap roots. So picture a carrot. It doesn't hold much soil. Like if you pull a dandelion up, there's not much soil. But the roots is where the water comes in the plants. And the way the water comes in is through something called capillary action. Water likes to stick to itself. It's called cohesion. So one example of capillary action is if you take a little piece of paper, in this case, we'll take a little flower, and if you put it in water, it'll expand and start opening up that flower. So that's an example of capillary action, and that's what makes all the water stick to itself as it goes up the tree, all right? So water only goes up. So in this activity, you cut out a tree and you cut out some leaves and you make a little model and with the arrows, you show that water only goes from the roots up to the branches, up to the leaves, and out. So if you were to take a plant like a tree and you were to cut it in half, you would see how water goes through a tree. So if you cut down a tree, in the middle is the heartwood. That's like when it was just a baby tree. Inside are called xylem, and those are the tubes that water goes up. As the tree grows, there's a cambium layer here that's represented by this orange. All new water tubes, all new xylem grow inside the cambium, and all new phloem, which has the sugar, grows outside. So all this water is going up through the middle of the tree. Now, it only goes up, so it has to get out of the tree at some point. So how does it do that? Well, on each leaf, you have openings called stomata, all right? And when the water gets to the, the, the hole, and the hole's there because oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged, but just like when you breathe, you lose water, so does the tree. So when the first molecule gets up here exposed to the sun and the air, it evaporates. But water likes to stick to itself, again, because of cohesion. So when that water molecule evaporates, it pulls the next one, it pulls the next one, it pulls the next one. So that is how water comes out of a tree. So that's the basic movement of water through a plant. This kit also has other activities. This one, we took a loofah plant, and you'll learn about the loofahs in the book. And we took some, we give them some soap, and they make their own little loofah soap. So they can use that to scrub during a bath. We also have an activity for um, germination tests. We give you some seeds that are not fresh, they're a little bit old, and you use a paper towel and some water and you watch the seeds over a period of days to see how many of them actually germinate. And then you can see like, if only half of them are germinating, I need to plant twice as many to get the amount that I want. We also have a phototropism activity that's in the book. You plant some um, seeds in a cup, you make a little cardboard box, make a little maze, and the plant will follow the light. So that's what these seeds are for. 
We also have a DNA extraction activity. We give you what you need to extract the DNA from whatever you want. Usually a strawberry works really well. And then the final activity is the forensic mystery. There was a horse stolen and there's three ranches around and no one knows which ranch took the horse. But you've got pollen all over the place and different, different areas have different kinds of pollen. So the desert is going to have a different kind of pollen signature than the plains, different, you know, your backyard will be different than mine. It depends on what plants grow there. And so pollen, you'll see all different pollens look different. So you have different pollens in here and you have to figure out what plants that pollen came from. And then you get a, um, a pollen signature from the different suspect ranches. And the rope that was left behind when they sold the horse has a certain pollen profile. So you compare it to see which ranch stole the horse. So this kit with 11 activities is made to be done by middle school aged children, maybe 10, 11, 12 and up. No batteries required, no internet required. And um, it's $30. So if you have, if you want to keep your kids occupied over fall break, Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, spring break, summer break, we need a birthday present. This is a good thing to give your budding scientists. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.